welcome back to Sex, Brains and Money on September 28th. We are now going to be joined by Stephanie Bell from Outsport Toronto, who's going to talk about an incident that happened not too long ago, which was Yunel Escobar deciding it would be a good idea to walk out on the field during a game with eye black that had a message on it for his opponents, and that message was, Tu ere maricon. Now, during the resultant uproar in the media, where people translated it originally to, see, to say that it meant, you are a faggot, Escobar said, oh, no, 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 that's not what it meant. In Latin culture, it means something completely different. It basically means, you're a sissy, or you're a wuss, or you're a pussy. And a lot of people seem to think that that was better, but I'm not one of them. You can read all of my comments about it on my blog, but now I want to hear from Stephanie Bell from Outsport Toronto. Thanks for joining us today, Stephanie. Thanks for having me. So first of all, tell us a little bit about Outsport Toronto and what it is that you do. Outsport Toronto is an umbrella organization of the GTA's two dozen or so LGBTQ sport and rec organizations. Mm -hmm. um, our mission is fourfold. First, to promote uh, health, healthy, li healthy living, mm -hmm. wellness, and well-being through participation in LGBT sport and rec. Mm -hmm. Second, to facilitate communication between the LGBTQ sport leagues in the city. Mm -hmm. Third, um, to effectively advocate to external parties. Mm -hmm. And fourth, to make sure people have fun <laughs> enjoying sports, right? Absolutely. Great. Okay, so how is it that you got involved with the organization? I got involved uh, with Outsport Toronto when they were filming a quick sort of documentary video for the Toronto District School Board's Futures Conference. Mm -hmm. um, the conference's purpose was to educate teachers, school administrators, coaches about homophobia and transphobia, transphobia in sport in high schools. Mm -hmm. Okay, and uh, how did your own personal experiences sort of lead you in this direction? What was it that inspired you to get involved? in the documentary in the first place? Well, I've been uh, a member of Toronto's Pink Turf Soccer League for several years now. It's the city's queer women's soccer league. Mm -hmm. um, I've had a great time. I've met awesome people. It's, it's been a great experience. That's how I first heard about the documentary video and uh, first decided to get involved. Okay, so it sounds like you had a pretty good experience in sports and you didn't uh, really run into homophobia the same way as other people might have. Is that an accurate way to say it? I think so, yeah. Um, I've definitely met a lot of people who have had some really challenging experiences mm -hmm. uh, dealing with homophobia in sport. For me personally, I think luckily it's actually been the opposite. Oh, okay. um, I've found sport to be a more welcoming environment than, mm -hmm. than some other social settings that I've been in. Mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, though, I, I don't think that my experience is representative of a lot of other people's. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, and one of the things that I felt was coming into play in this is the fact that it wasn't just about homophobia per se, not having anything to do with, you know, somebody's sexual orientation or preferences, but the fact that, you know, you being a woman and being involved in sports and stuff, you know, that that's perceived to be strong. And lesbian women are often perceived as masculine, whereas gay men are, are perceived as being feminine. So in my opinion, a lot of this has to do with old school misogyny and people thinking that, you know, strong people are okay in sports and weak people are not. And if you're masculine, then you're okay. If you're feminine, then it's not okay. Is that sort of how you see things as well? Yeah, no, I think, I think you're absolutely right. Um, the concept of misogyny definitely has implications for uh, queer people being involved in sport. As you said, um, men who are perceived as more feminine are automatically less, less strong, less good at things like sports. Mm -hmm. And women who are perceived as less feminine are, are the opposite, perceived as the women who are going to be better at sports. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I, I can't for the life of me understand the principle behind this because the most physically taxing action that a human being can perform is childbirth. And I don't know too many men who have gone through that personally. So for men to assume that women are weak and yet we have to go through the most painful and difficult experience that any human being would, doesn't really make sense when you think about the biology required for it. So anyways, now that we've talked a little bit about Escobar, what do you want to see happen in sports in general to start removing this misogyny, removing homophobia, and start helping queer people overcome the barriers that are presented to them? Well, I think there's definitely a place for organizations like Outsport Toronto to advocate to the more mainstream uh, sport community mm -hmm. so that people in the queer community have a choice whether they want to participate in mainstream sport and, and still should have the option to participate in, in the queer sport leagues. I think there's definitely still, there's still value in having a separate venue for mm -hmm. queer people to 
socialize with others in their own community, mm -hmm. um, especially because queer people don't have a lot of opportunities to socialize in healthy environments. A lot of our, our, our opportunities to um, engage with others in our community are in the bars, there's a lot of drinking, smoking, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So I definitely think there's still value in, in having these queer sport leagues. Mm -hmm. um, but I think people should have the choice is, is the queer league the right option for me, or can I participate comfortably in the mainstream league? I think that, may, that brings up a really good point, because there's now a debate about whether or not there should be a gay-centric school, just as yeah. there's an Afrocentric school in Toronto. And on the one hand, I figure, well, you know, at least it would be a safe space for people to be open and honest about their sexuality without the fear of bullying. But on the other hand, it's segregation. So I think you hit the nail on the head when you said it should be an issue of choice. And if you want to compete in one league, compete in that league. If you want to have fun in a community league where you're surrounded by people who you feel comfortable with, participate in that league instead. So tell us a little bit about what Outsport Toronto has on the go. What do you have coming up in the next, uh, in the next little while? Um, well, on October, Friday, uh, October 19th and Saturday, October 20th, we have our third annual Fall Scrum. Mm -hmm. The Fall Scrum is Toronto's biggest LGBT sport and rec conference. Mm -hmm. Um, the Friday will be held at the University of Toronto and will be focused on engaging youth in LGBT sport. Okay. And the Saturday will be more traditional conference style. Mm -hmm. um, we'll have three sessions in the morning that you can choose from and three sessions in the afternoon that you can choose from. Um, in concert with the Scrum um, and in partnership with the 519 Church Street Community Centre, mm -hmm. we also have um, the LGBTQ Leadership in Sport program coming up. Mm -hmm. And that's designed to help the leaders in our different organizations um, build capacity to run the organizations better. Well, that's fantastic. You know, I think you guys do a great job of uh, providing accessibility to those who otherwise might not have it. And uh, now that the audience has your contact information, hopefully people will get in touch with you if they want to find out more. So. Thank you, Stephanie. I really appreciate you joining me on the show today. Thanks for having me. Okay, so we're just going to take a short commercial break, and I'm going to wrap things up. I'm not sure if Bon Bon's going to come back or not. It depends on whether or not she wakes up. She's uh, currently lying down and sleeping, so I think I'll just let her be. But we'll be right back after this break. Stay tuned. <laughs> 